Good morning, everybody, and welcome to um, today's webinar, which is the first in a series of webinars that we're running um, that's going to look at using location data and GIS to identify um, sustainability goals. So uh, if you've been to these before, we do a little bit of housekeeping, so uh, just a little bit of that. Um, so there will be a recording available, so don't uh, feel like you've got to make rapid notes um, uh, and write everything down. There will be a recording available that you'll be able to watch back later. Uh, if at any point you do have any questions, feel free to submit them in the Q&A section um, down the right hand side panel. Um, you'll see a question section in there that you'll be able to click on and you'll be able to submit your questions. Um, and then um, in order to improve these webinars, we always uh, have a kind of an exit survey. Uh, which allows us to um, kind of um, make improve the, the keep improving the webinars that we've run in. So if you if you if you can, please feel free to to hold out for um, that end bit um, and complete the exit survey in order to make these webinars run better. Okay, so um, so before we begin, I'm just going to um, introduce everybody. So um, so from me first. So my name is Ian Usher. Um, I'm a business development manager at CADCorp. And I work with housing associations across the UK in order to maximise the investment that they make in, in GIS and help them see the benefits that they can, they can get out of the software that we provide. Um, Simon, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Ian. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Simon Parker. I'm the pre-sales team leader at CAD Corp. And this morning, I'll be uh, sort of demonstrating a number of examples of visualizing uh, location data with GIS and web mapping. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, and I'm really pleased to say that today we're joined by our colleagues from Emapsite. Um, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So Emma, would you like to go first? Yes. Morning, everybody. Um, there'll be people on this call that I've spoken to before and people that I haven't. So um, lovely that you've joined us today. I'm a business development manager with EMAP site and my particular focus is working with housing associations. Uh, our part in this is providing the insight and the data, which is what you're going to see today. And um, lovely that you've joined us and I hope that we can speak to you all afterwards um, and talk about um, how we can help. That's me. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Emma. And then Fiona. I'm Fiona Frost. I work with Emma uh, at EMAP site. I've only been working with housing associations since the beginning of the year, but you have uh, quickly become my favourites. Um, it's so rewarding to work with you and help you reach your goals and help you find the right data. And I will try and make data as interesting as possible today. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so what, we get, what we're going to now do is I'm going to ask all the presenters to turn their cameras off um, just because it allows us to run the presentations and the demonstrations more smoothly um, and we can turn these back on at the end um, for the questions. So I'm going to stop sharing. <clears throat> Excellent. So um, so what we've got is a, we've got a little bit of an agenda today. So um, we've got a, I can see that we've got a good selection of customers um and some of them are new to cad corp so i thought it'd be um quite beneficial to kind of introduce who cad corp are um and then i'm going to pass over to emap e site who are going to introduce who they are and what data sets they've got available to support your organization's um sustainability and environmental goals um we're then going to talk about how we can visualize the data and the benefits of showing the spatial data in the map um Simon's going to do the really interesting bit, which is the demonstrations of the software and the data together so that you can see how it all fits together quite nicely. And then right at the end, we've got um, we're going to uh, look at key takeaways that we've got, the next steps, and then we'll answer any questions that you've got as well. <clears throat> so before we um, progress, what we what we like to do is we like to make these sessions as interactive as possible. Um, so we've got a, we've got three questions that we just want to uh, really briefly ask. Um, that just allow us to kind of see how the, you know, if you're using um, location data, how you plan on using it and whether you benefit from GIS as well. So um, I've, I should have posted a question um, on your screens. Um, and the first question is, does your organization already use location data? So are you guys already using information spatial information to analyze within your housing association or the organization that you that you are attending from and <clears throat> what i'll do is i'll give you a couple of seconds 
and I will close it in a second. So I can see this 75% of you are saying that you you do use location data. So that's brilliant. So um, you're you're already benefiting from spatial data within your organisations, which is great. Um, the second question that we've got, <clears throat> does your organisation plan um, to improve its sustainability and environmental performance? So um, it seems to be quite a common subject um, around the kind of how organisations and how, especially housing associations can improve their energy performance of existing homes by 2025. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what you guys um, are aware of. And we've got the same percentage voted. I'm just going to give you a few more seconds, but that's that's an astounding 100 percent i don't think we've ever had 100 percent in one of these polls um so that is that's really good to see so you're in the right place to kind of discover the data sets that are provided oh, and somebody spoiled it by clicking no so we're down to 98 percent um but that's really good that you guys are uh you know you're coming here to kind of see the data that you can get and how you can how you can benefit from that as well um, and then the very last question we've got um, does your organization currently benefit from GIS and or web mapping? So again, this is just this is just us to get an understanding of you've you've got the location data, you're looking at the energy um, performances and sustainability and um, performance, and then are you using GIS to um, show that across the organization? And what I'll do, I'll just give you a couple more seconds again. And I'll close that one off as well. So again, that's that's sixty five percent of you saying yes to that one as well. So that's that's really good that you're already benefiting from having GIS and and web mapping, uh, and you're sharing the data across the organisation. But for those thirty three percent that said no, it's a really good opportunity to kind of see how the data and the and the products all fit together. So thank you very much for completing that. Um, so I can see that uh, we've had loads of registrations today, which is fantastic. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to introduce CADCorp and what we provide. So CADCorp are a UK-based soft, UK software development company, and we provide the CADCorp SIS, and SIS stands for Spatial Information System. And that Spatial Information System provides web, mobile, and desktop um, app-based applications. And we've been writing these applications for 25 years, um, and we focus on the software development and implementation services. So we're always listening to what our customers want um, in order to enhance the products that we provide. And we work across multiple different sectors. Um, and you can see these at the bottom. So we've got local government and central government users, um, emergency services, insurance and infrastructure. But the, the kind of the webinar today is kind of focusing in on the kind of the housing sector. Um, uh, so that's that's good. Uh, and just a little bit more about the spatial information system. So this this spatial information system that CADCorp provide is is providing products for web, mobile, and desktop based mapping applications. And the just as really briefly, the desktop allows users to um, create um, and edit de and provide detailed analysis. So it allows you to add data. Um, you can edit the information that's all, that you already um, have within your organization. And more importantly, you can analyze that information as well. Um, and you can do all this before you, before you then present it to the, to the web um, application. Um, and what that will do is it provides an interactive and dynamic um, experience for the user to be able to view geographical information data. Um, and they can, they can click on points and, and get the attributes about the information that they've got. Um, and it's important to say that the, the both of the web and the desktop can be kind of cloud hosted by by CADCorp um, or we can provide a managed service or we have flexibility of installing the products locally on your own infrastructure as well. Um, so there's always options there for for desktop and web being installed um, wherever your your preferred choices. So we've got we have lots of customers and we work with all these different organizations um, and there's there's lots and lots on this on this slide that we've got um but the important thing is that they've all got the same challenges that they're facing um and all these organizations have found the requirement to invest in cadcorp technology so that cadcorp um, can offer a solution to lots of different organizations um and they're they all range in size as well so we've got some that have got a few hundred properties uh we've got some that are looking at tens of thousands and then we've got one or two that are hundred thousand properties as well um but they're all using the same the core technology 
um, for kind of providing this, the same um, answers to the challenges that they've got. Um, before I pass over to you, Mapsat, I just wanted to, for those that aren't um, familiar with GIS, um, I thought it'd be good just to give a really brief, what is GIS? So, um, so GIS stands for Geographical Information Systems. And what that means to me is um, having the ability to drop a digital point on a map and seeing where it is in the real world. And that's really important because housing data is very geographic. So it provides links to your housing assets um, and your housing assets can be found using a, a full address, for example. Um, it could be found using a postcode or if you want to be really accurate, it can be used, it can be found using coordinates as well. And this, the GIS gives you the capability to bring lots and lots of different data sets together to answer questions related to geography, such as um, how you can improve the sustainability and energy efficiency of new and existing homes or um, all the property uh, or finding all the properties that are within a flooding area or creating environmental reports. There's lots and lots of different things that you can do with GIS, but it's all, all about bringing all this information together into one system. And it's it's really important as well that data sets can be linked. So um, you might have your uh, housing asset um, database, um, but then what you might have is an asset management database or a CRM. Um, and the, all these kind of um, other systems can be um, linked based on a, a property reference or a, a unique property reference number so that all this information can be shared across the organization. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass over to uh, Fiona from your map site and she's going to introduce what they are and what data sets they can provide in order to assist your organization in meeting the sustainability and environmental commitments as well. So I'm just going to change the presenter to Fiona. And Fiona will share her screen. Excellent. Lovely. So um, thank you very much, Ian. That was a, a really good explanation of, of what GIS is. Um, so I'm just going to run through um, who we are, what we do, the data that you can get from us and how you can really get the most out of it. So who are eMapsite? Well, there are about 35 of us now. We were originally set up by a group of consultants around 20 years ago, and they were basically frustrated at the um, mapping options that were available. Um, data was very um, difficult to get in the right format and, and to get that easily. So by the early 2000s, we had a great online map shop and that's what we were known for. But we've grown through investment and innovation to you know, proudly say we are a unique location intelligence hub and we are delivering mission critical insight to thousands of businesses, charities and consultants every day. And we support everything from someone just wanting a simple PDF plan for an extension on their house through to utility companies and government departments. And we currently service just over 20% of the FTSE 100. And we work in multiple sectors. It, it's not just housing. But the benefit to you in working with us is that you can tap into that expertise that we have from those various sectors. And we don't just supply data, we create our own data sets and we provide many businesses with spatial analysis. So from a sustainability perspective, that could be a geospatial evaluation of your stock to say which roofs are most suitable for solar power. And we are at the forefront of geospatial innovation. Our head of R&D was asked to present at an internal Google conference earlier this year. And you really know you're doing something cutting edge when Google want their internal teams to see what you're doing. So here are a few of our partners. We are blessed in this country for the amount of data that's available from so many quality suppliers. And um, what we do is we assess and handpick those data sets and bring them together in a licensed framework. Um, 
we have more than 100 data sets from over 30 suppliers some are very specialist but i don't think i can stress enough the value to you of being able to consume that data in the format that you want it in and without the headache of licensing it with each supplier individually and we are always available emma and myself to discuss what data will help you the most and how best to license it so here are some of the data sets typically used and valued by housing associations um, but one reason housing associations come to us is the way that our in-house data team can package up that data so you can really derive the most value from it so generally we would start by taking your own data and that could be from a spreadsheet from your software and then we geocode it which is basically a fancy way of saying we cross-reference that to an xy geospatial coordinate and a nationally recognized uprn now ian touched on that uprn earlier that's a unique property reference number and i know some of you will be using those uh, your own internally generated numbers in the house um, so this number would be an addition and this is um, from a, a nationally recognized um, UPRN, which is administered by GeoPlace, and um, that was set up by the government, and GeoPlace collect information from local authorities. So geocoding your data allows you to use data sets like these here together with your own data far more easily. But I'll go into more detail on the individual data sets shortly. So three ways you can access data from us. The first um, is data supplied as download under license for you to use in GIS like CADCorp. Uh, it's generally under an annual contract with updates included, so you're always using the latest data. And we have a great relationship with CADCorp, but we do supply data for any software and in any format. The second way you can access data from us is through our easy self-service map shop. Um, again, you can select the formats you want or multiple formats. And then the third way, if you have no software, we can supply data in spreadsheet format. That's especially good for risk um, data or ownership data. Um, and for any of you with software or without, your development teams can use our plans app to get PDF plans to submit planning applications. Now, I know we've got lots of different teams here today, asset management, sustainability, development and maintenance. So I thought the easiest way to explain the data that you can access from us to help with your sustainability goals would just be to quickly summarise it using the life cycle of housing stock. Um, the exciting bit is in Simon's demo when you, you see all this come to life, but there are some wider strategic decisions to think about as we go through that can really be um, aided with, with the data sets as well. So most housing associations' objectives and goals are set in a five-year plan. A key part of that is establishing a roadmap to net carbon zero in 2050 or before if possible. Um, but it will also include targets for the number of additional homes you'll supply. And for many of you, um, it will also be tackling fuel poverty, which obviously ties really closely with how efficient your homes are. Sourcing property is one way to get new stock. Section 106 properties from large developers uh, are one source. Um, Ordnance survey address-based premium data can help with that. Now, most of you um, who buy data use um, OS address products, but the address-based premium data shows the full life cycle of the individual property. So that UPRN that we talked about earlier is allocated to properties upon planning permission. So that can help you identify new builds in your area. Um, land registry data can also be used for this, but properties generally don't appear on the land registry until there's a roof on. So for earlier visibility, that address-based premium data is great. I'm not knocking land registry data at all. Um, 
it will give you very accurate ownership detail which is great for your statistical return but if you widen that area of interest um, when you you get that data you can see what other ownership is in your area and that could be other housing associations that have property in your area which is great for stock swaps but do you want section 106 and stock swap properties if carbon reduction in your assets is key what is the value to you of acquiring a home if it will need to be expensively retrofit so you really need to weigh up the cost of this when you could build one to a high standard of um, environmental efficiency to begin with and that's actually confirmed by a survey of housing associations from inside housing in july last year and that revealed that only roughly 40 percent of housing associations new stock was coming from section 106 agreements and the remaining 60 percent was housing associations building their own stock now as i said earlier we work with lots of sectors including construction environmental planning architects etc so we know the data needed to assess a site now you may be working with those as external consultants or your own in-house development team could be really hands-on so using land registry data in software like cadcorps you can query for green space of a particular size to see what land you already own that's right for your development team to go out and have a look at and that same HMR data will also reveal what local authority land is close or adjacent to yours and that will help you identify more possible sites for new homes and then once you know where these potential sites are we can help you with data such as environmental reports flood data and that's also including data taking into account climate change groundwater underground utility and services historic land use and tree data and those will give you a really clear idea of how desirable a site is for development and what risk or benefits are associated with each individual site and that land registry data can also be used for you to identify even smaller areas um, there's a term I heard recently, pocket parks, which I absolutely love. And those are just small areas that you can plant trees to sequester carbon or create community garden projects. So stock maintenance is fundamental to sustainability. Your ground maintenance teams can reduce carbon and costs by only maintaining areas within your ownership or developing maintenance partnerships. And that can obviously lead to carbon reduction from less travel. Or as one housing association that Emma works with did recently, they used the visualization in the CADCORP software to relocate their maintenance hub for reduced travel. You can save a lot of time and travel with national tree map data when you're um, conducting tree surveys, or you can use that data to double check what an external tree maintenance company have quoted to look after your trees. And also an insight from our work with insurance companies is they've actually found that tree coverage can correlate directly with crime or car theft. Um, so you could use your own data with tree data to see if a change in planting or pruning could help reduce crime. Your sustainability teams can gain value from EPC data from us, which again is geocoded and has that UPRN. So I know one of the things Simon is going to show you later is to be able to see hotspots of the lowest rated properties. And then that can be overlaid with things like your own fuel poverty data. And that can help identify properties that are most urgently in need of improvement. But one of the key reasons, again, um, the housing associations that Emma and I talk to say they buy data from us is to give you that visibility of multiple data sets working together to really understand your stock, to protect and mitigate risk where possible and future proof. Do you know what percentage of your stock is at risk in the future um, from climate change flooding? 
and more and more lenders are taking this into consideration. So if you've got a stock that's at risk of flooding, it will be more difficult to leverage finance against that to build more homes. And if there's remedial action you can take, then you can also help reduce your insurance premiums. I've talked about sourcing, stock, building, but is there existing stock that you have that's actually a li liability? By overlaying several data sets like reported maintenance, future flood prediction and subsidence prediction, together with things like EPC, you may identify stock that would actually be better disposed of. And then obviously you have these funds to put back into better stock and so the cycle goes on. If you wanted some more information, we do have a dedicated page for housing associations on our website. And there's a form on there that you can fill in, which comes through to um, both of us and our emails and mobile numbers will be up at the end. And we are always more than happy to set up a meeting to talk about your specific portfolios. But now I'll hand you back so that you can see the data come to life in Simon's demo. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Fiona. It's it's uh, it's really interesting to hear about the data sets that you guys provide and how it um, and and those examples that you've got of how they could be used. That's really good. Thank you very much. Um, so before we pass over to Sam, so I want to just want to say that one of the one of the biggest challenges for organisations is how they can visualise the data that eMaps site have, have have told us about so far. So CADCorp products are able to um, view the data sets in a number of different formats. Um, they can be viewed within the organization and shared across departments so that all the users can gain valuable insight from the data and help the organization organizations to make informed um, decisions around the information that they've got um, so using cad corpses web map uh, data sets can be used to enhance the understanding of your portfolio properties uh, here we're going to we are showing how we can show our properties alongside the land title register, for example, grants maintenance information and tree canopy information that you maps out have already talked on. Um, and it all provides a valuable insight into each of the properties that you own. Um, so without further ado, um, what, I'll, uh, what I'll do now is I'll, I'll pass over to Simon, who's going to demonstrate how the power of CAD Corpses web map can provide valuable insights into, to the, into the data that you maps out have spoken about so far. Thank you, Ian. Good morning to you all again. So I'll just share my screen and then uh, make a start of my demonstration. So yeah, GIS and um, web mapping is a great way of um, visualizing your location data. And I'm going to show um, sort of a couple of examples of how this data can be used to help with your environmental and sustainability goals. <clears throat> and I'm going to be doing that using um, the CAD Corpsis web map application which you should hopefully be able to see in front of you right now uh, and this is a web mapping solution that can basically allow you to view and analyze your location data in its simplest form you know just simply showing um, the location of where your assets or properties are on the map can provide that um, geographical view of your stock and these green circles here um, on the map basically represent each of my properties and i've used the um, ordnance survey address base data to locate these properties in their correct um, geographical position <clears throat> and as I sort of zoom into the map and as we uh, sort of getting close enough that background mapping will change and we're now viewing that ordnance survey master map data which provides that building level uh, detail and here we can see the outlines of properties and gardens which are important when sort of viewing information about land ownership and grounds maintenance data which I'll, I'll talk about in a bit more detail very shortly <clears throat> But beyond you know just simple um, points on the maps representing um, your properties web mapping can um, visualize your data um, in a number of ways and the first example um, is um, EPC performance so viewing the EPC performance of your stock <clears throat> and I've heard a little bit about you know the government and um, wanting you know to reduce those greenhouse gas emissions and one way to do that is to improve the energy efficiency of our homes and I think from some recent stats that I read on a government website about 95% of new builds are built to a, a band C or better so our attention should perhaps focus on our older existing housing stock where we could perhaps make those 
um, greatest improvements to um, improve the overall um, energy performance um, of our stock. And the data that we've got on screen here <clears throat> is the EPC um, performance data. Um, and each of these circles, yep, represent one of our properties or assets, and they're color coded based on their rating. And on the left hand side, we can see what <clears throat> um, all the colors mean in regards to um, their rating. Now, in web mapping, you can also drill down on the data further. So perhaps I want to focus on this specific property here. We can click on that property <clears throat> um, and we can view all of the attribute data behind that particular property. And here on the left hand side, we've got a selection of some of the information that is included um, as part of the EPC data that um, EMAPS I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> and that includes information about its current rating, um, its type of property. Um, and as I scroll down um, further, we've got information about kind of its um, efficiency in, in terms of like um, heating, windows and, and insulation as some examples. And that could be really use, useful information to perhaps identify ways in which the energy efficiency um, of, the, of the properties um, can be improved. But GIS can also be used to create filtered um, data sets. And this next example is basically um, a subset of the previous um, example I just showed you. Um, but this is uh, only showing all of those properties that have achieved a rating of A to C. So these are our most energy um, efficient properties. But a more helpful data set um, might be this next example, which will basically show the least energy efficient property. So these are all the properties that are rated um, D to G. And this is where sort of GIS and web mapping becomes really powerful because we've now got a data set showing effectively so the, you know, the worst performing stock in terms of um, EPC ratings. And the benefit of viewing these um, properties on a map instead of maybe a spreadsheet or a database is that we can see where all of these properties are located in relation to one another. And this means we can perhaps target our improvement program. So we can focus on areas where we've got um, groups or clusters of bad performing properties. And using the um, search by area capability, we can also query that data further. So maybe I'm interested in a specific um, area. When I run my search, it's then pulled out all of the properties that fall within my area of interest that are currently rated uh, a rating of D to G. So I can view information in this table view here, or I can actually download um, that list of results to an Excel file. So here I've pulled out all of the addresses within that area of interest, and that may be useful to help me plan my um, improvement program. So that is this really powerful functionality that gives you the opportunity um, to explore um, and analyze your data um, geographically. Now, staying on the theme of improvement programs, GIS can also help um, support your housing maintenance schedules. And we all know, you know, significant activity for housing associations is the ongoing repair and maintenance of stock. So perhaps maybe identifying stock with higher than average um, repair rates may also provide, you know, opportunities to um, focus our improvements on those on those particular properties. Um, and this particular layer here is showing how many repairs we've responded to by property. And again, just using a really simple theme to visualize the data we can identify which properties have had the most um, amount of repairs. And these are shown um, as these uh, is red squares. Now there could be a number of reasons why, why this might be the case, um, but we can perhaps look at um, the nature of these repairs and maybe understand if there's a common um, theme to them. And, and just like my previous example with the EPC data, we could use this information to perhaps target specific properties for improvements, or again, just identify groups of properties um, close together that might benefit from um, a program of upgrades. And again, that might just help us reduce the number of repairs and, and the number of visits that we need to make to these properties um, in the future. <clears throat> and it doesn't just have to be historical and um, repairs data. Um, you can also view maybe all active repair cases that have been recently logged as well. And again, you know, just the benefit of seeing where they're located um, on a map um, gives you the opportunity to perhaps um, plan maintenance visits or our teams attend repairs that are close to each other um, with again the aim of hopefully reducing that travel time and maybe um, subsequently improving um, your response times as well. <clears throat> now the threat of um, flooding um, in the UK can pose a, a significant um, risk so viewing your um, properties alongside 
Um, the flood futures data can help you um, evaluate the potential risk um, to your properties. Um, and with that information, you can decide if um, mitigation measures may be required or perhaps contingency plans for when a flood event might occur. Or perhaps you might just consider disposing these properties um, from your portfolio. And on the map here, we basically have some data here showing our predictive um, flood modeling for, for surface water. Uh, and the properties shown in red are those that fall within this potential flood area. And you can do the same with the future um, modeling as well. So this example is basically looking at um, flood modeling for 2080. And again, based on sort of our current housing stock, we can see which properties might fall within that particular risk area. And then you can use um, GIS to analyze what that actually means um, in numbers. So here I've just sort of defined an area of interest as this sort of red dashed line, and I've counted the number of properties at risk between those two models. So in the 2020 sort of um, flood modeling, we can see 31 properties could be at risk, um, but in the 2080s, we can see there might be a potential increase in the number of properties that might be at risk for future uh, flooding. Now, beyond sort of just um, bricks and mortar <clears throat> and the space around your assets is just as important for sustainability and environmental reasons. And you can use um, web mapping to evaluate that space within your estates or, or your neighbourhoods. And I think we could perhaps all agree in the last 18 months or so how important it has been to have access to um, outdoor space. And But green space also has that kind of positive impact on cutting those carbon emissions and protecting nature. Now, the first data set we may consult is our HMLR or land ownership data, which shows our land ownership. Um, and we can use this information to see you know, what green space falls within our particular land ownership. And with this particular data set, we can query that further by clicking on um, an area of interest. Um, and here we can view information regarding its title number, its ownership and, and the type of tenure, whether it's um, freehold or leasehold. And then within that ownership, we can then perhaps focus on our grounds maintenance data. And this is a layer which records all of our grounds maintenance responsibilities. And this is one of the sort of the big use cases of um, GIS in housing. And the major benefits of capturing this type of data in a GIS is that you've got an accurate record of the sort of grounds maintenance you maintain. So it gives you accurate measurements for when you want to negotiate grounds maintenance contract or um, determine your service charging. But that same data, uh, could also be used to um, evaluate the availability of green space um, around your assets. And this next layer um, basically takes the ownership um, polygon here um, and then using a label summarizes that green space or grounds maintenance within that area. So we can actually see um, the composition of that green space um, within our um, estates. I also read sort of recently um, sort of a use case in the, I think it's in the northeast of the UK, where a housing association introduced sort of wildflowers into their communities and they sort of uh, reported that this was um, great for sort of people's mental health and well-being, but also helping to um, attract bees which are on a decline. And with you know access to aerial imagery that we can see in this map as well, you know, we can use this type of data to um, evaluate our green space within our estates and and look for those opportunities to improve um, the availability of green space or, or create those um, pocket parks as mentioned by um, EMAP site. And to support your own data, um, we also have that national tree map data set as well there from EMAP site, which shows tree heights and, and canopy cover. Um, and that data can also assist with the planning of um, planting um, new trees as well. And then finally, in terms of sort of green space, there's also the Ordnance Survey open green space layer as well. And that's another really useful resource. And it identifies locations of um, public parks, playing fields, uh, play areas as, as some examples. And again, just a handy data set to have when you want to evaluate the green space around your assets or potentially reviewing um, new housing um, development sites. So I've shown you quite a few examples of visualizing location data. Um, and next, I just want to show you sort of one of our adding applications that could be used to perhaps analyze your assets and produce um, a, an environmental report. So right at the top, I'm going to use this search capability to search for a specific property. So I'm going to perform that search by entering um, its house number and then just to um, reduce the number of results, let's um, add in the postcode as well. 
And then from the list, yep, I'm interested in 27 Crown Road. So I select that result and the map takes us to that location. Then to analyze that particular property, I'm going to use the Find It capability, which is a tool that can search multiple data layers, so multiple environmental business data layers at once for, for a particular asset or area of interest. And then it provides you a summary of results. So for today, I'm going to use this master map option to select the building footprint for 27 Crown Road and then run my analysis. And as a result of that analysis, on the left-hand side, we can see um, the results. So we've got some information back about the energy performance rating for this particular um, asset. And we can choose to view all of the results in the left-hand side, or at the top, we can choose to download the results out to a formal um, PDF report. And that PDF report is basically made up of um, three um, sections. So the first page is basically um, a summary page. So we are branding this as our asset envi environmental report. Um, we've got a date and time of when I've just performed my search. And we've got a map identifying um, uh, the property or asset that we've just searched on. And then on the following pages, which is the body of the report, we then get in our information, our environmental report. So first of all, against our energy performance um, data, we can see the current energy efficiency rating and a number of other sort of uh, information. Um, and on the second page where it continues, we can see sort of the energy efficiency regarding certain sort of fixtures and fittings in the property. Next page, we've, we've extracted sort of the land ownership data from the HMLR data. So we've got the title number details um, on, this, on this example here. Next, we, we pull back to sort of the repairs data as well. So we can maybe analyze and see how many repairs have been um, recently reported um, at this particular um, property. It also intersects um, the flood futures modeling data. So we can see um, this information is actually um, showing that we're in a, a flood risk area. And then finally, we're looking at some data from the British Geological Survey. This is sort of ground movement type data and shows us um, a variety of sort of different um, risk factors for this particular asset. So that was just sort of one example of um, using the sort of the find it adding application for web map to analyze um, assets and, and produce um, a report on those assets against a number of different sort of environmental um, and business um, data sets. So returning back to um, web map, so yep, I've shown you a lot of examples today um, and I hope you can realize sort of the benefit of GIS and web mapping as a tool for bringing data together about your assets and, and viewing that data geographically provides that different perspective to your data. And for the purpose of my demonstration, um, I've published all of these different data sets into this single map. Um, but in web map, you can share and customize these views to your own requirements. So if I close this map, um, in web map, you can publish as many maps as you like. So you can have maps for different teams or, or maps for different projects. So here you can have a, a single map which focuses um, on um, repairs data as an example. And if I select to um, open this map, um, this map has been customized um, where we've only got sort of fewer uh, buttons available in the top right hand corner. From the top left hand menu, there are also fewer options. So I've customized this view for the intended audience of this map. And if you look at the available um, data sets, I've only focused this map on repairs and um, related data only. So on the map, we can see our recently logged repairs um, and the other data set is the same example I showed you in the previous map, which is counting the number of repairs um, by property. The application is also um, responsive as well. So it can be accessed on mobile devices um, out in the field. So at this point, I'm just going to um, show you um, web map on a mobile device. So here I'm mirroring my iOS device um, and this is what web mapping looks like on my mobile device. Um, we can use you know the pinch and pan technique to, to zoom and, and pan around the map and in this example here I'm showing um, some property point data displayed on the map um, and if I um, touch one of these um, points we can see the attribute data behind that, that property we can also turn on a variety of different data layers in, in the mobile um, view as well. So here again, I've got the um, recently logged repairs data as well. So even on a mobile device, we can turn on different data layers. So having that ability to you know, access your location data on a mobile device could be you know, really powerful when colleagues are out in the field making visits to, to, to these locations. And then just to really sort of conclude my demonstration today, 
I'm also just going to quickly show you just another add-in application that is available for web map um, and that is the report it capability which is a reporting tool um, which can be used to report issues or problems to your organization via a map so I could be an officer maybe making a visit and I've come across um, a concern for safety um, I need to um, provide my email address as a, as a person who is um, making the particular um, report Underneath, I can add some uh, comments about the, the issue that I am reporting. So maybe I've witnessed um, a, a damaged um, pavement. Um, and then at the bottom, if you're on a mobile device, you can take a picture of that issue as well. So here I've taken a picture of the damaged pavement, attached it to my report. And then when I hit submit, that report is submitted to the organization, just as an email to the team or person that needs to deal with that report but it's also saved as a data, in the database as well. So again, that's just a really powerful tool um, at your fingertips where you can report items using a map, but accessible by a, a mobile device. And that really brings then to my demonstration this morning, just showing you how um, you can use location data and GIS to visualize and analyze your business data geographically to, to help you achieve those environmental and sustainability goals. So thank you for watching my demonstration. I'm now going to hand you back to Ian. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. That's a, that's a really good way of bringing all those data sets that EMAPs that I've talked about into a, a single application so that they can be shared and analyzed um, further uh, within the within the CAD Corpses web map um, application. So thank you very much for that, Simon. Um, so I suppose the key takeaways from today, so as you as you heard during today's webinar, there are lots of different data sets available from your map site um, and, they, and they can assist you with the environmental and sustainability goals that you've got within the organisation. When used against your existing housing property stock, um, you'll be able to easily identify patterns in the data and gain valuable insight into the bigger picture of your estates. Um, the GIS tools help to identify patterns in data Having an application such as the CAD Corpsis web map um, supports all of the data shown by your map site today um, and will allow you to start to visualize and query your spatial information. And then by visualizing that spatial data, you're then ready to start making improved decisions based on real world attributes. Everything for a, a housing association, as I said at the start, is linked to your housing assets. Um, and it's good to bring all that data together um, so that you can see it in one, one environment. So as Simon said, you can link it to your EPC ratings and your CRM, um, and it all helps with, with your organization meeting your environmental and sustainability targets that you've set. So now you're probably wondering what the next steps are to find out more. Um, it's a great idea to talk to either eMaps out about the data that, they, that you've seen today, or talk to CAD Corp about the applications that we've shown the data within. Um, we're always more than happy to talk about our hosted web mapping service that can assist housing associations who don't have a dedicated GIS officer but can see the real benefit of, of the GIS um, systems and the data to go with it. Um, and then as I said at the start, the exit survey um, allows you to ask the uh, allows you to answer questions that allow us to improve the webinars that we continue to run. So please remember to fill this in as well. Um, so um, what I can see, there's been a, there's been a couple of questions um, as we've been going through the demonstration. Um, so what I can do is I'll, I'll ask them now. So, um, so it looks like the first one is for eMap site. So uh, what data formats do eMap site provide the data in? So Fiona or Emma, would you like to answer that one? Um, basically, um, any any format. Um, so if there's one particularly that somebody has in mind, get in touch. But yeah, we've we've got multiple outputs, so we can support any software, any format. Brilliant. Thank you. I suppose it's worth, worth saying from a, a CAD Corp point of view as well. I think um, Fiona touched on it in her demonstration is that we we support 300 different formats of data. So um, so we we can we can tap into that that kind of data format. Um, and, and display it on the on the web map application as well. Um, I think oh no, there's another one just come in. So um, can this web map be cloud hosted? So um, so the answer to that is yes. Um, so as I as I touched on during the presentation, um, we offer 
um, flexibility in where those applications are installed, but we do offer um, cloud hosted environments and they can be managed as well. As I said, if you don't have a, a dedicated GIS officer or a dedicated GIS person, um, then we can offer um, a solution that will that'll work for you to be able to get the um, web map and the, and the data to fit alongside one another. Um, I think that's all the questions there are there are a couple more but there are, there are more uh, there's some more that are a bit more detailed so what i'll do is i'll take them offline uh, and we can get back to you um regarding those um i suppose the the last thing to say is that um i hope you um enjoyed the webinar today um all of our contact details are currently on screen for both um cad corp and the um ladies from uh emap site fiona and emma um so please feel free to to take them and, and get in touch with us um, and as I said, um, please remain on the site so we, you can you can fill in the exit survey and we can we can get some we can help to improve these webinars that we continue to run. Um, so thank you very much, guys, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.